Hello, this is Gavin Phillips with Photographer's Photoshop and in this tutorial you will learn how to turn this photograph into this finished painted effect. This painting technique is unique for digital. It's also unique for Photoshop using Photoshop's smudge brush and the custom brush that I use to create this painting will be offering to you for free download. So let's get started. We'll minimize this image. Here's our original photograph. Now the first thing I want to point out is the size of the image that you're going to be painting. If you right click on the top of the photo here and go down to image size, we can see that this is nearly 13 by 8.5 at 300 dpi. And that's fine for painting your image. You can go a little bit larger than this but what you don't want to do is resize the photograph to the final output size. So for instance, if I was going to print this at 30 by 20 on canvas, you don't want to resize this to 30 by 20 and try painting it at that size. It's going to be very slow and unless you've got a, a really high-end computer, it's going to take a very long time to paint it. The best way to do it is just get a regular size photograph, 12 by 8 is probably the smallest you want to go. You can go higher than that, of course. And then paint your photo and then resize it after you've finished the painting. It will print perfectly. You can easily go to three, four, five times the size of the image. By resizing in Photoshop here, you could just go up to whatever size you want here. And I normally use the uh, best for enlargement, the bicubic smoother. So you can easily go up to any size that you need when you finish painting. Now the first part to painting your image is to run this setup action. This is also included for free. You can do this manually as well, of course. The action just saves you a few clicks, a few steps. I'm going to run the action. First thing it does is duplicate the image. We don't want to be working on an original image. So we've got our duplicate here and then it stops at the unsharp mask dialog box. We do want to sharpen it a bit to start off and I just go with these settings here that's fine click OK and if we go to the layers palette here we'll see what that action did for us. It duplicated the background layer a couple of times. Here's our sharpened layer. We've got a hue saturation. If I double click on this adjustment layer it will pop it up for us. And we can see that I've just bumped up the saturation a bit. We want some good vivid colors. This is a painting. It's not a photograph. So we do want to bump those colors up a bit. But you do have everything here ready for editing if you want to make any changes. If it's a bit too much or you want to increase it. I'm going to close that out. The same with the curves. Double click on that. Opens up. You can see what I've done here. The curves will lighten parts of the image. We do need a lot of light in there. So I'm going to close that out. Now, as you may know, these adjustment layers come with masks, and this is very handy to be able to paint away any part of this curve. So, for instance, let's say I want to lighten up you know, part of this image. Obviously, lifting it up is going to get it lighter down here. So, you normally want something like an S curve, but a lot of times there will be too much light in certain parts of the area. The curves is, we don't want any blown out areas. You don't want any areas that are blown out where you don't have any detail. So, as you may know, you can go to the brush tool and just a regular default Photoshop brush. Here's an important shortcut. You can right click inside the image and change the softness or the hardness of the brush on the fly here. So we're just going to go medium hardness brush. You can also change the size of the brush. But there's another important shortcut if you use the brackets key. That's going to increase or decrease the size of the brush really quickly. And then painting with black on the layer mask, you can set these colors to their default by pressing D on your keyboard. Now X will switch them. So just by pressing painting with black at about 50%, uh, we can paint away that curves adjustment. You know, say we don't want a lot of uh, extra light here on this white area, which we don't want. We don't want to blow this out anymore. We want to remove it. And we don't want a lot of the extra light here on his white fur, which will lose us detail. So we can just remove that. I'm going to remove it 
completely from the uh, the white fur here. I'm going to leave it probably on the rest of the image. Let's take a look here. I'm going to paint it off of the background. So just by switching between black and white, now if you paint on or way too much, you can just switch to white and that will bring the curves back in. So by using the layer mask here, we've got complete control of where the light is that we applied in the curves. So I'm going to take it completely off of this background. don't want any of the curves there. But if we turn it off, we can see it's still making an effect. It's quite subtle. If we open it up here. There we go. We can see now that it's just lightening up the areas that we want. Now you want to save your image, of course, right away. So we're going to go down to File, Save As call it anything you want and you want to be saving your work at regular intervals using the keyboard shortcuts control or command s because if Photoshop were ever to crash and you hadn't saved your work for 20 minutes you're going to lose 20 minutes of the painting so let's get started here I'm going to select the sharpen layer and duplicate it the shortcut for that is control or command J now we have a copy of that. We're going to zoom in. If you press and hold down the space bar, the hand comes up and you can click and drag through the image. That's another shortcut that will be handy for you. Now I'm going to go over, select the smudge brush, and you will be directed to the place where you can download this custom brush, one of the custom brushes that's included. Select the brush. And the next most important thing is the strength of the brush. And for the hair, we're going to be starting at around 82. Now we could rename this layer. If you double click in here, you can rename it. We can call it Paint 1 or Start. Okay, so now we're ready to start painting. Now, the thing to remember is that as you're painting in here, you see I'm just holding the mouse down and dragging into the fur. I normally like to paint the lighter areas into the darker, but we do want some kind of variation as well, of course. I'm using a mouse. If you have a tablet, it's even better for you. I do have a tablet as well, but I generally prefer the mouse. But all I'm doing is, is holding the mouse down and dragging through the fur. Okay, now you do want to get every single pixel in the image will have to be touched have to be painted with just going with the direction of the fur. Okay, so curling it around here at the bottom, going to make sure I get every single part of this. Going to move down here into the rest of the image, into the lower mouth. So let's move down here a little bit, and we're just going to doing short strokes here. Okay. Um, just working this area. You want to be careful here. If that's okay, I might have gone back a step there. You probably know that Control or Command Z would take you back one step. There's a way to get back more steps by going to the History Palette. And by the way, if any palettes that you see here aren't up in your Photoshop, you can access all of the palettes under Window. And all of the palettes are here. You see, they're checkmarked the ones that are already active. So let's go back to our layers here. And as I mentioned, a very important shortcut are using the brackets key to increase and decrease the size of your brush on the fly. So we're just working this area here. And then under the eyes, just to back it up a bit. And sometimes you're going to work the, the other way. You want to vary the brush strokes to get the variety. So we're just moving down here. These whiskers, I'm going to just paint them out. If you go over them a couple of times with the smudge brush, it will remove it. So we've got all of that. We're going to go into this eye area here. You can see I'm just following the contours, following the direction. In these are shorter strokes because we're in a an area here where we can't do longer strokes. We're just working it into 
let's move across to the other side here and, and in these very dark areas we're going to have to touch those as well you've got to get into everything even so that we get some kind of brush strokes in there working up here now of course you can zoom in closer if you want to Z pressing Z on the keyboard is the shortcut for the zoom tool we're going to go back to the brush now and keep going here so using the exact same technique you're going to paint all of the fur and the background I'm not going to go through all of it here it's exactly the same technique what I'm going to do now is show you how to paint the eyes we're going to go to the dog where all of the background and the rest of the fur has been painted using the same technique that I showed you there the background as well now we're going to focus on the eyes so as I mentioned everything's been painted the fur the background except the eyes so I'm going to duplicate this control or command J and double click in their eyes now we're going to zoom in and grab the regular brush tool and we can go up here to one of the default Photoshop brushes right click change the softness to about 70 or 80 percent and if you click inside one of these you get the color picker I found that this is a nice brown for dog's eyes you can see the hexadecimal here it's 5d 430a you can choose any color that you want inside here click OK with an opacity on the brush about uh, anywhere between 25 and 40 depending on what you would like I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and just click and hold the mouse down paint in the eye here and the next one now I'm going to make the brush much smaller and by pressing D we go back to our default colors of black and white I'm going to drop this back to about uh, 20 somewhere around there and we're going to paint in the pupil or make them a bit more obvious go back to the brush the shortcut for the brush tool is letter B on your keyboard now if you're having a problem seeing you've got some reflections in here so it's difficult to see the pupil but you can just guess click and put that in there we can click one in here if you click a couple of times you can get more darker area now what we want to do is go back to our smudge brush that same brush at about drop it back a little bit the strength and the brush has to be made a lot smaller of course and we start moving around the eye here moving painting inside the eye so we get brush strokes in the eye you want to make sure that all of this is painted or been touched we get those might bump it up again now to around 82 Let's zoom in a little bit here go back to our smudge brush and what you can also do here is you can bring in more color you could go back to the browns and bring in a slightly different hue you want to make sure that this is all painted in let's move over to the side here the other one and start smudging this in there we go now if we switch to our dodge tool and a regular brush midtones set to midtones and about 20 percent we can lighten certain areas make it look like catch lights so I'm gonna right click here make the brush medium hardness and you can just lighten up certain areas of the eye 
so that it livens it up a bit. Go to the other eye now. We might want to drop this back a little bit, it's quite strong. I'm going to back up there a little bit. And go back in the history palette a few. There we go. Uh, that one. Okay, go back to the layers. There's a shortcut for backing up several steps. It's Control Alt and Z, or Command Option and Z. Make the brush a bit smaller. Just come in here and paint in a little bit of this lower area here. Let's zoom out. Now we want to lighten it, so we're going to use curves again. It can get a bit flat the image when we're painting and like I said it doesn't matter if certain areas are too light we're going to work on that in the layer mask you can fill the layer mask with black so it completely conceals it by pressing option backspace or alt backspace on a Windows machine it fills it with the foreground color here so we've completely removed or hidden the effect of the curves here and now by grabbing a brush you can just get a regular brush and you can paint it back in to probably at around 50 percent to areas that need to be need to switch to white that need to be lightened up so I'm avoiding the white fur and the background for the most part and just painting in light, that's a bit too much, make it a bit softer the brush just to lighten the areas that I want that need it So bring it back in here you can see it's making quite a big difference you've got complete control of where it goes by just switching between black and white painting on the layer mask so. Now the final step is sharpening and we want a layer made up of all of the painting everything with the, that we've done in one layer we want to consolidate everything into one layer that's called a stamp visible and there's a shortcut for that it's on a windows it's control alt shift so you hold down all three keys control alt shift and press e on the keyboard and on a mac it's command option shift and press E on the keyboard and this gives us a stamp visible it's everything that we've done so far put into one layer let's duplicate that control command J and the sharpening technique that I use is under filter other high pass and you put the radius up very high this is much higher than you would use on a normal portrait or landscape let's put it up to about um, somewhere in the 10, 12, the, the higher you go up the more sharpening you're going to get which will bring out more of the brush strokes then you change the layer blending mode to soft light we can see now what a difference that has made go to the zoom tool even on this recording area where it's not even that large this photo you see the big difference, it's zoom in there so if we turn this sharpening layer off with it on and you can get you can increase the sharpening if you use the overlay blending mode that gives it even more now if it's a bit too strong you could go back and put less radius on there or you could reduce the opacity of the sharpening layer here so you've got complete control over it might be a little bit too strong with overlay I'm going to change it back to soft light now to receive the free brush that I use to paint the dog here you'll need to go to this web page there's also a clickable link inside the movie here that you can click and it'll take you straight to the page so you can get the your free brush and free Photoshop action that free setup action 
You can also review what's included in the software package that gives you step-by-step -step movie tutorials for not only how to paint pets, but how to paint people with the smudge brush. And there's quite a big difference in the techniques, how to create these painted edges with the brushes that are included. With this package, you receive over 35 custom brushes, not only for the smudge painting, but also to create these painted edge effects. And you can see the before and after here with the rollover effect. And in this package, you receive the tutorials for not only the smudge brush, but also another painting technique that we came out with about eight years ago, which we called Paint Like Monet. And this is also a hand painting technique using the Photoshop Art History brush, and you'll be able to create a different kind of style of painted effect with this other set of movie tutorials. And of course, all of the custom art history brushes that are used to create this effect, as well as several one-click actions. So take a few moments to review this. There's a huge sale being offered right now, 75% discount. Let's return briefly to Photoshop. We often get emails from clients asking if there's a faster way to produce this kind of an effect and there is not. We've tried all of the Photoshop plugins and they don't come anywhere close to producing this authentic painted effect with the hand painted brush strokes. There's no way to replicate it except in Photoshop using the smudge brush and techniques we showed you. The final part of your painting is to sign it. Well that wraps up this tutorial on how to create the smudge painting in Photoshop. My name is Gavin Phillips, Gavin at photoeffects.biz. Thank you for watching and have a great day.